Hey guys, in the video I'm going to show you today, I'm working on a trailer mini split that has two air handlers that are under the carriage of the trailer. And the complaint is that it'll run in heat, but it will not run in cooling. And um, it turns out that this particular product isn't made anymore and finding parts for it were extremely difficult so I'm having to order some generic parts but even just finding the manual for it was a little bit difficult and I was unable to diagnose without the manual but um, at least we got the diagnosis and we know what we need to do so here's the video and I'll explain a little more later at the end of the video stay tuned Like when I walk in, it be feel heat hot. Six flashes. Hmm, let me see if I can figure that out. Six flashes. All right. All right, out here. Ooh, that thing's running in heat. All right, let's start taking this apart. I'm gonna start taking apart what I can and see if we can't figure out why we're running in heat. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a board under there that basically controls everything. Right now, I'm just looking to see if, um, you know, we have something unplugged or something. What's keeping this thing from? There's my reversing valve. That might be a 240 volt reversing valve. And yeah, we can check right there. I don't know if these energizing heat are cool though. We got 240 volts, it is energized. Still running in heat. Thank you. 
Looks like we've had some ants in here. <clears throat> Alright, this is my power board and all of that right there is hot. You don't want to touch any of that. I gotta make sure we're getting a signal. Alright, these are gonna be my two power wires right here and right there. Forty volts, two hundred forty volts. Obviously, because it's still running. So I've got what well, looks like two two communication wires. Alright, those wires go right there. Not all of my circuits are being used. Forty volts. All right, let's switch that to DC real quick. See if we're getting a very DC signal. It's about the same one. Oh, go, there it goes. I'm trying to get that where y'all can see it. About 100 volts there, 46, 37. Let's check the other one. 100. It is fluctuating also. One of these is not being used. Must be that one. So all I can really tell is that it's communicating. But these two wires right here go to my reversing valve. And it definitely is energized. See if I can figure out what those six flashes were for. All right. From Google, this is the closest thing I can find. I'm not even sure if it's 
for this system a communication problem between the indoor and outdoor units or a malfunction in one of the temperature sensors <clears throat> okay I disconnected my reversing valve as you see right here and now it should be running in heat but um <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken these up here I think are going to be my temperature sensors I'm really not sure I need to get a manual on this and try to find my temperature sensors there's probably some on the coils and there's that looks like some right there. Yeah, I need to find a manual if it's possible. Let's see what I've got. I've got an MPN. Do y'all think blue one will help me? We're about to find out. <laughs> okay, I've got Mr. Cool Stuff and no MPNs. So that did not help me. This one, let's try this. All right, their virtual assistant here. The... Oh, here we go. We're getting something. I indicating inverter. Six flashes on an NPM mini split correspond to the P6 fault code indicating an inverter module IPM error. This error can be caused by several factors, including issues with the inverter module itself, the wiring, or the control board. To diagnose and address the issue, I recommend the following steps based on specific. says I need the basically it says I need the manual mm -hmm. all right well how do I get the service and Let's see if it can generate a manual for me. Lovely. Let me see. Do we have anything for parts list manuals? Let me try this again. MPN. I'm trying to hurry because my wife has no power at the house. So far, no MPNs. HFM. M. 
no MPNs. All these are Mr. Cools. They may very well be related. Wait a minute. What in the world is that? Product data. This is a package unit. Mr. Cool makes package units? Not what I'm looking for. I don't think I have a problem with the inverter module. This thing is running in cool now. I'm getting nice cool lines. Let's check inside real quick. Alright, so I'm going to try to find the manual on these. I'm going to try to find a manual. This thing's going to have temperature sensors indoors and out. I just turned it off inside. I don't know what it's doing right now. Come on. Okay, after I left, I was able to get a menu and six flashes. Excuse me, not a menu, but a manual. And six flashes means evaporator coil, temperature sensor, T2 malfunction. I've got two evaporators in this one, so when I go back, I know what to check. I'll tell you, just getting the manual was a little bit of a job, but uh, in cases like this one, you can't really do it without the manual. Thanks for watching. Well, maybe I'll include the repair on this one. So stay tuned. All right, I'm going underneath to find the indoor coil sensor on both of these and test them it's turned off but the condenser's running so let's see what we find okay. i'm at the first one and y'all might be able to see i got water right here right if y'all can see that right where i need to go i'm gonna poke some holes in this plastic oh and see if it, I can get it to drain. We got guineas. Yesterday it was chickens. Today it's guineas. All right, I got that water to drain through. Now I need something to lay on that cardboard right there being just right yeah I did a heat exchanger earlier today Let's say it, let's just say it didn't turn out very well. And I'll try to make a short or something out of that one. I get down here and I see this oil dripping off the flare joint excuse me this right here it was not on um, I had to put push the manual button Timer 
flashing. What does that say up there? Let's uh, <clears throat> let's take this off and check that temperature sensor. That looks like a drip. Yeah, that was an oil drip. Let's take this off. Try to find that temperature sensor and check here. One last screw here. <clears throat> mm. Now to find this cool temperature sensor. That it. Hmm. Let's see if I can see what is T two. These are clearly two temperature sensors right here these two right here over here I think of my coals over here so I think that that's going to be my temperature sensor let me see if I can get a Okay, I just unplugged the coal sensor, or what I think is the coal sensor, and the whole thing just shut off. All right, let's see if we can get an ohm reading. I'm gonna need her. I'm gonna need my little 
excuse me guys this is I'm having to lay down to do this I'm gonna need my let's see there's one Mm. All right. This ain't working out so well. See if we can get a resistance reading on this. I got nothing. Five point five kilo. Oh. I got to try this another way. I think the thing keeps falling on me. Five point eight kilo ohms, and from the manual, I texted myself. I texted myself kilo ohms. Celsius. That can't be right. 5.877 degrees Celsius. Hmm. All right, let me um. 77. That's 170 degrees. We're getting close to boiling. <clears throat> there's, there's no way it's that hot. <clears throat> Just as a reference, let's check that other one over there. All right, I got an open lead on this one and this one was reading 170 degrees <clears throat> that one must be reading something I can feel 
thought I felt some air movement. But yeah, there we go. Hmm. All right, so I'm not getting anything on this one. That one's out of range. Let's go down to the other one and check those. So we're just gonna get the whole plug here. Make sure I get the model and serial. All right, for that one, I can no longer get parts for it, or at least the sources I was trying to get parts from it's a Medea product, it's MPN, but it was made by Medea. And they no longer have any kind of parts list for this that are active, nothing. And it says refer to online sales. So I ordered a small box of 10,000 ohm thermistors. And I'm just gonna use a generic thermistor on these and um, correct the problem with the leak that we found. And hopefully that does it. So as soon as those come in, we'll have a repair video and I'll try to link the two videos. Thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you on the next one.